Hello students, the purpose of this video is to introduce you to the power of process assignment for reading number two. So let's begin by, by clicking over here on the syllabus and, and the schedule, etc. If we go to the syllabus, Concourse syllabus, we're here at this page. Uh, we can go topic outline right there, and that gets us a little bit closer. We should scroll down to week 10. All right, so here, here we see that, that on week 10, the power of process reading number two assignment becomes available uh, on uh, Wednesday the 28th at 1 p.m. Usually assignments are become available at, at uh, on Monday, but this time this assignment becomes av available on on Wednesday, a couple of days later. Now, if you'll notice, the reading reading number two is from Outliers. I don't know if you've noticed, or if your instructor has told you, but you will be reading uh, a book called Outliers: The Story of Success by Malcolm Gladwell. Now, what I have selected for power of process for this power of process assignment is an excerpt, uh, like a page and a half or a couple of pages, something like that. Uh, so it, it's short. It's very short. You, I, uh, I don't want to say too much about your assignment for the other class for English 1301, in case I don't have the details right. But for this class, uh, you're kind of going to preview preview, you know, the reading, your, your assignment to read that book by reading an excerpt. And it's an excerpt toward the beginning. Uh, and it, uh, it, it's, it's a really nice uh, way of introducing you, I think, to the assignment. Um, and so it begins this week, and we scroll down a little bit to when it's due. And of course, uh, by, by the way, here on week 10, it also says introduction to power of process reading number two, and then that's what this is. It's an introduction to it. We scroll down to week 12, and we can see when the assignment is due. So this assignment is due to turn it in on time, means to turn it in by November 13th, by the end of the night, 11.59 p.m., or an additional week if you're submitting it late, also by 11.59 p.m. on November 20th. All right, so that's that's uh, we've taken a look at where it is on the syllabus. And uh, when we clicked or when we press this link, it also gave us access to these things here to this nice chart. And uh, we won't find it on week 10 because this is an, uh, this is a chart of assignments that are due. And so the, the date that organizes everything or the date by which everything is organized is the on time due date. So this, this third to the last column, or one, two, three, four, fifth, sixth column. And so when is that assignment due, the one we're talking about here? Connect power of process, number 420, reading number two, outliers, etc. It becomes available, right, on, on, um, on October 28th, Wednesday, 1 p.m. But it's due on time on November 13th, or... Um, late by November 20th, in each case by 11.59 p.m. All right, so that's where it is on the master schedule. Okay, so now we can also press uh, course content. We scroll down to week 10. All right, week 10, um, reading number two, Outliers, a Story of Success by Malcolm Gladwell. We can see that there. We also have, when you click in there, you get the materials, reading number two, etc. And you accessed most likely this video on this page, right? As I recorded, it's not there, but if you're watching this video, you watched it because you found it here on this page. You, there, there are also a couple of other places where you can find it, where you might have clicked or pressed to, to uh, access this video. Um, let's see. Uh, I won't talk about other assignments. 
um, to access the um, this assignment, this power of process is, is one of the connect assignments. So you can click here or you can press here, right? Either either place. So might as well press this this link right here. And that takes us into the general connect assignments page. As we scroll down, we get the various categories of assignments in Connect. So I'm scrolling until I find Power of Process. And notice when I find Power of Process, I find the video. This video is for the previous, uh, for reading number one. So this one isn't it, right? So uh, if you access this video, it's always weird to talk about it because kind of the past and the future are kind of combined in one moment. If you access this video through here, it's because you found it here and you clicked it here, right? Of course, I can't do that because I am producing the video. I'll put it up later, right? Um, but here is the Power of Process Reading and Writing Activities uh, folder, right? And I, I provide this chart on the outside of when it becomes available at 1 p.m. and when it's due on time or late. When you press on the on the link again you, you see this this uh, previous reading number one but you will all you again maybe you access this video right now that you're watching it maybe the reason you're watching it is because you clicked on it from here for reading number two right here is the chart and here is uh, the one we're focusing on which is power of process reading number two outliers etc and the dates that i've already shown you is the same chart and then here's the assignment, Power of Process Reading Number Two, Outliers, a story of, of, story of Success. All right, so you click on that assignment. And when you do, you don't get this. You will not see this. I'm seeing that because I'm the instructor. So let me place it on student view. This is what you would see, okay? I think, you know what, I'm not 100% sure you would see this or if it would take you directly to the assignment page, right? So if it takes you here, great. You would click on that and here's the old assignment. I don't know that you would actually see this because, or maybe it wouldn't let you access it. Doesn't matter, I mean, it's past due. Um, but this second assignment will be available to you. Now, again, when I click on it, it isn't available because if this is the student view, then it's the reality of when things become available or not, right? And the start date for it is 1 p.m. October 28th, and I'm making this video several hours before that, the night before. That's why I cannot click on it, okay? But you will. Now, when, you, when I clicked on the link in Blackboard, it might have, again, I'm not sure because I'm not a student, Maybe it takes you directly into the assignment and you don't have to do all this. Or maybe it takes you here and you've got to click on it and then hit continue. And then it takes you to the assignment. I mean, it won't be hard to figure out, right? Well, when, when you're actually doing it. All right, I'm going, I am going to return to instructor view because I do want to preview the assignment with you. And the only way I can do that is by being on instructor view. Okay, so this is just for me to access it. This is not something you would do. You can't. All right. So what I'm thinking is maybe when you click on Blackboard, it will take you directly into here, right? Rather than all those steps that, that you just saw, right? And, and read it. Power of process reading number two. I think I've read this like, you know what five different places already right but this has instructions now um the reality is not that many people did the the assignment for reading number one i think it was a total of eight so i'm glad it was at least eight right but this is a class with i think if i'm not mistaken 21 students so it should have been 21 right um I will, I will grade that assignment soon. If you want to wait to see how you did, those are the, the, the eight of you, who, if, if you're one of the eight people who did this assignment, if you want to wait 
uh, to see your grade on the on on a reading number one power of process on that article that 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 you read and reacted to that's a good idea i will be grading it this week and not on the weekend i'll be grading it you know uh, it might be uh wednesday or thursday and so i think it is a good idea to wait to see how you did on that one and then once you see how you did on that right let's say you got a hundred yeah like, oh, okay i know how to do it uh so you can proceed to doing this one all right so it is a good idea to wait so start When I press start, it uh, you know the the reading the, the the reading selection appeared and you can see it's really faint in the background. But what happened here is there's there's this wheel, and actually oh man, um, I didn't uh, I mean the things that I told you were important, but I got sidetracked on one point. Right? Let me see if I can get back to that page. Oh, it's right there. Right? Assignment instructions. Okay, good. It's it's easy, it's easy to come back. Uh, the instructions are for you to do all of the assigned power of process activities for reading in order clockwise, clockwise. So uh, an old fashioned clock, it's like the little hands, right? And the little, you know, time, and it's like noon or 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, right? And time goes this way, like that, right? And you, you can see, you can see my pointer, right? And so this is, this is the motion of the clock in this direction clockwise so there is a wheel and you already saw it right when i hit start you saw the wheel so start at the top and then work your way this way you don't have to but that's the best way there's an activity called Bef before reading preview the text you should begin with that one and then work your way clockwise back to the top uh, note don't plagiarize don't include in your responses any words information ideas copied off the internet or elsewhere that's students first of all that's dishonest so don't do it right have have honesty and ethics meaning that that you're here to learn and the way to learn is by you struggling with the assignment yeah i'm saying that sometimes life is hard and that's good right it, the assignment shouldn't be easy or else what's the point of even doing it right uh, you're not here to do things you already know how to do okay none of us are so so be honest and be honest with yourself and of course with me as well and also it's very easy to catch okay this is my 17th year teaching it's very easy to catch it was easy when it was my seventh year and even my seventh month of teaching many years ago it wasn't that hard to catch the when people cheat okay so just keep that in mind when that happens you get a zero on the assignment respond with your own words and ideas those are the words and ideas i'm interested in yours not someone else's in any way right so when we press start um here's the clockwise thing i told you about right start with this before reading there's a little section called before reading then a during reading section and then an after reading section so and the first one is preview the text Again, I strongly recommend, and you you click on each one to do each assignment. Okay, and I recommend you go in this order, clockwise, as I showed you before. Um, I'm I'm going to click on each one. This is before reading, preview the text. So I click on it, and once I do that, the 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 wheel goes away, right? The wheel or clock goes away. And we end up with this text box and below it is the reading. Now, sometimes, uh, I mean, if you have access to a printer, right? You can, can you print this? Let's see, control. Yeah, I think you could. I'm actually going to try, hey, it doesn't look very good. Let's see, notice it's kind of cut off like that messing with the with the zooming mm, it doesn't seem to be a very good printout now you, you you might not have access to a printer if you're, you're at home or something but but if, if you do or if you're at a public place like a library or something then maybe you would have it i'm, I'm gonna go to landscape i don't think that fixed the problem there's another idea though that i have i think 
Yeah, I'm trying to select it so I can highlight it. That makes it easier to print sometimes. Maybe stick it on a Microsoft Word document. But another idea I have is maybe take a picture of it, right? Uh, you probably can't take a picture of all of it, but you know, let's say that, and you can mess with the zooming. I do Control minus to zoom out and Control plus to zoom in on my keyboard. And there are other ways to do it, I think, with uh, pardon my ignorance, but there, there's another way to do it using the, the mouse or the touchpad. But you could do it in sections, right? You know, maybe take a picture of this section right here and then a picture of this section or make it a little bit smaller so you can cover more in your picture on your phone camera, right? Take a picture of this half and then the second half, right? And maybe you can have it on your phone instead of having to scroll up and down, right? So, I mean, I, mean, I don't have to teach you tricks, right, to, to do things, but that's just something that, that uh, comes to mind, right, to make it easier. Um, all right, but right now I'm going to click on each one. Preview the text. When you look at the title, author, headings, paragraphs, vocabulary, and any other clues, what do you learn about the text? And notice this is part of the before reading section. So really, you don't really read it. For this first item, and really for the first four items, you should not read it. You should kind of skim it, right? Notice what it says, the title. So what can you tell from the title, the story of success? Maybe that's something you'll, you'll write about here, right? Uh, or the headings. Does it have any headings? Mm, doesn't really have headings. Some articles do, this one doesn't. Paragraphs, okay. What does it mean, the paragraphs? Well, sometimes you can read maybe the first line or the first few words of a paragraph and kind of skipping our lift up your heads. So let's say, I mean, and that stands out. When I look at this paragraph, lift, lift up your heads. So without having to read the whole paragraph from here to there, right, what does that tell you, right? Story of success, lift up your heads. You know, biologists talk about ecology. So what do you learn from, you know, just kind of reading a few words from each paragraph at the beginning or the end or, or some, or whatever sticks out vocabulary. If you, if you look through, you see the word achievement, sapling, biologists, invariably beneficiaries. And notice I'm just skipping around because that's the point. The point is to skim and skip. What do you learn just from that? In other words, without reading it all the way, just kind of here and there, what do you learn? Now, it's important here, here is where I would type my answer. Now, I'm not going to do this for you, all right? It's up to you. What you say is up to you. But there is a requirement. Please write 20 or more words in one or more sentences. A sentence ends in a period. In fact, isn't this a sentence right here? Don't use all caps, please. Uh, the only reason I use all caps was that uh, in the past, when I've put that there without all caps, people ignore it. <laughs> they, they, uh, they Trust me, they do. They answer the question in like one or two words, right? Something that's way too short, for example. So this is too short, right? It's a sentence because it ends in a period, but it's too short because it's not 20 or more words. So you will need to count your words and make sure that, that you have enough words. Now, uh, you can't see, I'm not going to put my finger on the screen because you can't see it, but, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that only has eight. There is a way of kind of making this process better, easier. Uh, I'm going to open a Microsoft Word document for myself. You, you could do something with, with some kind of word processors you, you have. Word is usually the best thing to use. Um, and let's say you take your own answer, right? The answer you came up with and you, I'm doing control C. I suppose this could work too, copying like that, but I usually use the keyboard shortcut. So control C for, for, I'm using control C for a, for a PC, not for a Mac, cause I don't have a Mac. Um, too poor for that. <laughs> um, and then, um, and so then, and so the point is that I'm pasting my answer. Why? Because by pasting my answer, and you can't see it, uh, I'm sorry, I can't demonstrate it as well, because the, like, this is like the, right here is the end of the universe, like the, the bottommost part of the screen that I'm sharing to make this video. Um, but below that, I can see a word count, like, kind of like below, below here, I can see the word count, 
okay the word count and actually the reality is i see like a little recording mechanism <laughs> the little like uh, pause and, and play buttons that i'm using to record this with the with a tool that i'm using so i i can't really see it but it would tell me how many words are in this in right here okay so you don't have to do this the word document isn't important although if you do it it's a good thing because maybe you could put maybe you could kind of keep track of your answers right that you're putting by putting them on a word document please don't don't confuse uh, please don't get confused though the word document is not necessary okay please do not turn in a word document i don't want your word document okay so like I'm, I'm getting scared right now that you'll think that i need a word document no no no. the only reason i i'm doing that right now is to show like and, and it wasn't really a good that good of an example because you didn't actually see the word count because of the limitations of the fact that i'm recording and that that part of the screen doesn't show okay but but it will if you, if you trust me you'll see a word count down there and you'll see if you've made it to the 20 or more words that are required here okay um let's see uh actually let's see cancel ah all right notice it told me i hadn't saved it because i had not clicked on this and that's fine because i'm not really doing the assignment here the next one is predict what you'll read notice what it says you know, it's, it kind of says the same thing. Don't read it, but what do you think is the main idea? And it tells you how many words and sentences you need to produce in the box. Okay. Recognize prior knowledge. What do you already know about the topic? So after skimming it, not after reading it, this is still not the, this is still before reading it. Write 30 or more words in here. Type 30 or more words in two or more sentences. So there need to be at least two periods, right? You can have more sentences and more words than 30. But these are the minimums. If you don't meet the minimums, you'll lose points. You will not, you will not get full credit. See, your answer needs to make sense, and you need to have at least the minimum uh, a number of words and sentences. And, and the question is here, what do you know about the topic? So, for example, what do you know about success? I mean, you could answer this without even looking down here, right? So what do you know about the topic of success, right? Like, you know, what have you heard? What have you read? Your own experience with success or lack of it? I don't know. Uh, I think we all of us have both successes and non-successes in life. And, and, and by the way, life isn't just school, right? We can succeed in other things, too, and, and not succeed in other things as well. So not, School isn't everything, right? Uh, so there, there are many avenues of life. And so you could say, well, I already know some things. Or you could say, I've read some books about success, or I watched a movie about success, or whatever. I mean, whatever. I, I am, I'm worried that students didn't do uh, the reading number one power of process assignment because they thought there were some magical answers that they had to have. And I don't know if they even looked at this the assignment and, and looked at it and thought it was too hard. No, 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 this is easier than you think. You know, uh, some answers like there's no right or wrong answer, but you need to at least meet the minimums. Um, ask questions about the text. So here, like, ask questions when you look at same deal, when you look and kind of skim it. What questions do you want answered? So maybe a question would be, you know, how do I achieve success? But, you know, if I if I type, how do I achieve success? Question mark, right? That, that's one sentence, but it's not that long. It's only like, well, I don't know, like what, six or seven words? How do I achieve? I think that's five words. So you need to ask it like in more and more detail. So I would type something like, well, I've always wondered. I hear a lot of people talk about success and blah, 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 blah. But I, but I really want to know how to achieve it. So it might be more than, like, notice this says questions. So to get to 30 or more words and two or more sentences, you, you need probably more than, than one question. Maybe ask like four or five questions. And if you ask four questions, that's four sentences, right? So you for sure would cover this. And if each of your questions, you know, three or four, three or four uh, questions is, let's say 10 words each, then for sure you're covering that, you know, 30 minimum word requirement. Now, and, and I, I, keep, I keep kind of sticking to success here. I mean, it could be anything. You kind of read something here. Biologists talk about ecology of an organism. 
So you might have a question. One question I have is, what does biology have to do with success, right? Why, why, did, why did the author say that there? Uh, or billionaire, ah, billionaire, rock star, celebrity, ah. So, so you could ask the question about celebrity, uh, successful people, right? Uh, again, notice I'm just skipping around at things that stick out to me, right? The, this whole first section of these first four items were before reading, you don't read it yet. Really, you shouldn't read it, okay? Uh, now, once you're done with that, you enter the during reading, and there are seven items that you're going to answer. So during reading, identify the author's purpose. So now, now you should read it. You should actually take a moment and read, read the whole thing. All right, so da -da 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 -da, there it is. We read it. Okay. So now, does the author, so identify the author's purpose. So now that you've read it, does the author want the audience to be informed, entertained, or persuaded? Now, students, if you put entertained, you're, you're going to get, I mean, possibly a zero on this because, come on, <laughs> okay? It says, please write 30 words in two or more sentences. All right, so... I'm telling you, it'll probably be a zero if you have like a one or two word answer, right? Uh, don't even, not even partial credit because like you're kind of trying to get away with, with, <laughs> I almost said something else, but you're trying to get away with, you know, doing, not doing enough work, right? So what clues in the text help you determine the author's purpose? So, you know, there, there are several things you need to say. The clues are just like things that were said. So if you think the purpose is to inform well, what are some of the things that are informative that the author says? And and remember, say it in your own words. Don't just don't just like, you know, copy word for word, like like a phrase and stick it here. No, please don't do that. In your own words, say some things that this author said, several things, right? That that showed you that the main purpose was to inform, or that the main purpose was to entertain, or that the main purpose was to persuade. I invite you not to say it's all three or or two out of three. I mean, it's okay, but try to make up your mind, okay? At, at least two, uh, and not and not three. And remember, thirty words in at least two or more sentences. So at least two sentences that total to thirty or more words. Okay, what what happens next after that? What happens after that? We have describe the author's tone. Tone is kind of what's the mood that the author sets. What kind of feelings does the author uh, help you have when you read this? What clues in the text help you determine the author's tone? So, so what is the tone? Is it happy? Is it sad? You know, so happiness, sadness, nervousness, uh, feeling scared, uh, feeling hopeful, optimistic, pessimistic. No, I mean, I'm just saying a bunch of stuff, right? I mean, really, you'll know once you read it, right? Um, and I myself am not, am, am not giving you any clues. I'm not giving you any answers because you come up with the answers, right? That's the point. Now, what clues help you determine the author's tone? So let's say you let's say you say it's sad. I don't think it is, but if you think it's sad, well, what are some of the things that were said in this selection that that show you what's sad? So the, the author said this is this, which was a really sad thing. Then another sad thing was this, this, but in your own words, right? And notice, I want you to say several things because it's forty or more words in three or more sentences. Now, those students who didn't do the assignment, maybe maybe you did read it, you know, look at look through it the way I, I'm doing it here. And that, oh, that's a lot of words and a lot of sentences. Yeah, in the end, if you meet the minimums, you end up writing about 400, 500 words or so. 400 some. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but it's, it's a lot of words. And that's fine. That's fine. It's an assignment. And, and as you do it, you learn from it. Um, answer questions about the text. Did you find the answers to your questions? Because I say, do you remember those questions you had, right? So maybe go back to it, right? Go back to the ask questions about the text. So the, oh yeah, these were my questions. Okay. So as you read it, after actually reading the whole thing, what did you find answers to those questions? What answers did you find? So 30 or more words, two or more sentences. Typically students say, nope, I did not find any answers to my questions. Now that wouldn't be enough because that's not 30 or more words. Maybe say why you didn't find answers to your questions. Sometimes we ask questions that that kind of, uh, we thought it was something else, right? So some of the students explain, I thought it was something else. So my questions were on a completely different topic, but then I realized that, he, that the author was really talking about something else, right? So maybe that's why none of my questions were answered. 
Others say, yes, my questions were answered. Or some of them, I had like three questions and two of them were answered. This one and this one was answered. And the answer was blah, 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 right? In your own words. But the, my third question wasn't answered because I guess that wasn't important to, to the author, right? So again, I'm emphasizing these are in all caps and uh, time, is, time is flying. So I, maybe I'll stop saying, but, but please remember, right? That you need to have the minimum number of words and, and the minimum number of sentences. Um, then after that, determine the implied main idea. Now, the main idea will not be a sentence that you copy and then, and then say, the main idea is, and then in the author's own words, no, no, no. It's your own, uh, your own way of expressing what the author thinks is the main idea or what you think was the author's main idea. So uh, determine the implied main idea. What clues in the text help you determine the author's perspective on the topic? How can you state the author's main idea, remember, in your own words? So, I don't know. I'm going to say the main idea is that, I'm going to say something kind of silly, okay? I'm going to say the main idea is that elephants make the best pets, not dogs, not cats. Okay? The best pets are elephants. That's not what it's about. But remember, I'm not giving you the answers. But if that's my answer... The, my idea is the author basically is saying that elephants make the best pets. Well, that's good. And that's a few words. I don't know if that's like, what, 10 words or so. But I've got at least 20 more words in which I'll explain why, right? This part right here talks, shows how elephants are great. This other part also talks about elephants. It doesn't, right? You understand that I'm telling you. I'm not giving you the answers. So I'm giving a silly example. So with the reality of what the author is actually talking about, right? You say what you think is the main idea and then explain why in your own words. Okay. Identify pattern of development. Mm, hold on, hold on, hold on. I see the term main idea. This one, find the supporting details. And it is the text primary pattern of development narration. So is it just like a story that gets told? Or, or several stories. Is, is it a description? Is, is, is the author mainly describing people or places or things? An illustration, which is similar to description, kind of like an explanation. Is he showing a process? Like first do this, then do that. Is he showing cause and effect that one thing leads to another, which leads to another, which leads to another, etc.? Is it a classification, like different categories of things? Or is it an argument, like kind of like a persuasive essay? Now, on this one, students, feel free to say that it's like uh, more than one thing. It's, it's narration, but it's also argument. Uh, it's narration and description and classification. Again, I'm not giving you the answers, but the point is that you here feel free to combine. How does this pattern of development affect, affect the author's purpose? So you already said what a main idea was and say if the main idea was a thing about elephants making the best pets. Well, it's, it's an argumentative uh, article because, again, I'm not giving you the answers, but, but the point is it's argumentative because, because uh, the, the author is trying to persuade us that elephants make the best pets, right? And show, and um, right, so, so kind of explain that you need at least 30 words, two or more sentences. Back to the process, make connections with the text. You make connections with the text. What information reminds you of yourself or other texts or the outside world? Please write 30 or more words in two or more sentences. So this one's really easy. You've read it. Anything? Well, there's there's maybe there's this part over here where it talks about a person that did this and that. Say, so, you know, I have an uncle who did things like that, who was very whatever, right? Um, or, or something in my life. Like, I have a similar thing that I want to do like that. I, again, I'm keeping this really general because I don't want to give, I don't want to give any, any answers. If I do, everyone's going to put the same thing. What's the point of that? So again, and this is other texts. And by the way, other texts mean like means like other articles, other movies, other books. And I, I threw in there right movies, right? Movies, TV shows, songs, anything, real life, right? Real life situations, right? Again, now if it doesn't, if what you read here doesn't remind you of yourself, you can't. You are never excused, students from writing whatever it says there. Some students, I think, and, and I don't think some students are being slackers. I don't think so. But sometimes a student says, well, my honest answer is no, 
Okay, so that must mean that I'm excused from this. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Everyone, because in that case, you know, kind of like the smart in a way, but not in a different way, students, right? We'll, we'll all put no there, right? So, so they're excused from having to put something. Well, sir, my answer was no. What do you want me to put? Well, what I want you to put is no because, right? The word because leads to more words, right? No, because my life has been very different from the lives of the people that are being described here and blah, 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 or the elephants that are being described here, right? So again, you are never excused. In none of, none of these, you must produce what, what I ask. Okay. And different people have different answers. Some are yes, some are no, some are kind of not really, sort of, you know, but everyone must produce the, at least the minimum. And then finally, I think we're done, right? The, we're done with this section. And then after reading. So not only after reading, but after doing these things, summarize the text. Now, there's something that I like about this one. It's the longest one, 60 words Oh, students, it seems like I skipped something. I have a feeling I skipped one. Because while I'm looking at this, it reminds me of a, a, a previous one that I don't remember talking about. I don't think I told you about find the supporting details. Uh-uh. I did these, and then from here I skipped to parent of development, and, and I shouldn't have done that. Find the supporting details. Okay. Okay, I, I, I'm having trouble clicking on it. So let's see, like this, 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 like this. There it is. So, so notice, I mean, be, be aware of that, that, some, that if you don't click, make sure that what you click on is what you get. And if not, then kind of pick a different part on, on the wedge, right, to, to press to, to get the one you want. So it took me a while. And that's probably why I didn't uh, talk about it in the first place. So there it is, supporting details. What examples, facts, explanations help you understand the writer's main idea? And I, and I regret that I didn't because, uh, because we had the main idea fresh in our minds. But, but I still remember it because it was the thing about the elephants, the fake answer, right? You've heard of fake news? Well, this is a fake answer. <laughs> How can you state the supporting details in your own words? Notice this one's pretty long. Let me go back to the main idea one, right? So we had main idea, and I pre I'm pretending that the main idea is that elephants make the best pets, right? And that that shows, that, and that doesn't surprise me because I can tell that the that the author really likes animals and, and that big animals are his favorite. And so it makes a lot of sense that he's saying that the main idea is that elephants are the best pets, all right? So there it is. That's what I had said before. So then what are the supporting details? So now I'll give several details from here, right? several details that, that show that the main idea, and I, I'm sorry, students, I did it again. I clicked on the wrong one. There it is. So in my own words, I pick out several things, right, from here that show that the, that kind of prove that the main idea really is that thing about the elephants. It isn't though, right? And notice that that will take 50 words or more in four or more sentences. Right. So so it takes and you can always write, you know, seven sentences in 100 words. Don't exaggerate either. <laughs> Don't put too much. All right. Uh, but but the point is that, that yeah, you do need, need to produce it. OK, so this is the one I had skipped now. And I remembered it because the one we were at when I remember that I had that, that I hadn't done this one is a summary. I love the summary one because of this. Take what you wrote in the main idea one. Copy it, go over here to summary, and paste it in there, okay? And that's part of your answer. Then go back to the one about details. Let's see if I can manage to actually click on it. There you go. Copy what you put there, right? Copy it. Go back over here to summary, and whatever you copied, uh, you, got, you got your main idea. Well, just go wherever it is and then paste it. So then you'll, you'll have both. You'll have the main idea and the summary. So really, there's no new work here, is there? There is no new work because you already have the work from the, from the previous two, right? So it's a combination. It's almost like why I even put it there, right? Well, that, I put it there so that you can see how the main idea and the details 
come together into a nice summary paragraph, right? Evaluate an argument. What is the author's claim? Now that's very similar to the main idea. What reasons support the claim? How adequately do the reasons support the claim? So, so it's, it's, it's almost like you could type the main idea again or, or paste it in there. And then, you know, what reasons it's, and you know what, if you want to kind of repeat things from the, from the main idea one, that that's fine or from the details, but there's an additional thing that goes beyond summary. How adequately do those reasons support the claim? So you've got the details that support them. Like, for example, my argument that the, the elephants are the, the best kind of pets. Okay. Well, did he do a good job proving it? Those things that he said are proof of that, right? The, the details from here. Did it really prove it or no, right? And you can say no, because blah, 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 there wasn't enough. Or yes, I think that proved it, especially the part where he said blah, 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 something like in your own words, blah, blah, blah. Then there's uh, develop an argument. To what extent do you agree or disagree? So don't say, say I agree or I disagree and that's it. Like I was saying before, uh, you're, you'll get a zero for that because you're avoiding the work. What reasons support your argument? None. So I'm done. No, right? It's again, I'm giving you examples of what not to do, right? So, so you start saying, you know, if you agree or disagree, and you say, I especially like the part where he said this, although I don't agree with this other thing. You see, you could kind of like a mixed, uh, mixed feelings about it or completely agree or completely disagree. Everything's fine as long as you meet the minimum production level, right? And then finally, confirm your prediction. Let's see. Predict what you'll read, remember? When you look at it, what do you think it's going to be about? What do you think will be the main idea, right? Okay. Now, so you read it. What parts of your prediction were right? None. Save. I'm done. Nope. You'll get a zero, right? Okay. Nothing was right. And I think the reason that, it, that, that I completely guessed it was because when I saw this thing over here or this thing over here, I thought it was something that it wasn't. All right. Or I was completely right. It was exactly about what I, what I thought. It's like, it's like I'm a fortune teller with a crystal ball, right? I, I knew exactly what he would talk about, even though I hadn't read it yet. Or kind of in between. Some things were right, some things weren't right. And this is kind of a short answer. 20 or more words in one or more sentences. All right. When you finish all of them, and by the way, you can go back and, and change your answer. Sometimes when you do one, you realize you have to change something else. You know, sometimes, right? You can go back and change as many times as you want. You click on, you. Uh, when you are done, select this one. This one isn't for a grade. Don't skip it though, right? Write something. I don't think it'll let you move on if, if you skip it. So you've got to type something, something short. Don't, you know, answer these questions, but do it, do it in, in short fashion because it's not for a grade, but you, it's required for you to submit the assignment. So type, type at least one sentence or something. Notice I didn't put any requirements. Notice it's got uh, like all the things I've been doing, how many times I've been clicking on it. It's got like, oh, I clicked on these like 10 times. This one, this one four times, this one, this one only one time, etc. cetera, right? Um, so that's my process circle, the times that I looked at each one, etc. So you type an answer. I'm just putting whatever, right? And then you hit save. And once you hit save, notice what happened, right? It gave you, it gives you a nice little, uh, I guess, box with with all your responses, the previous pre text answer. Here it is. And notice this one says you haven't answered it, right? Because I didn't really answer. Had I answered, then it would have the, the answer there. I can click on it and go back and change my answer if I realize, oh, gosh, it's too short, right? Uh, I only put, I, I counted again or I stuck it in a Word document. I realized it was only 15 words. Let me click and go back and change it, right? Now, once you've done all that, I think you can submit the assignment. Now, notice I click on it and it's not letting me. Um, but I know eight students did it and submitted it, so I, I know it's doable to submit this assignment. I don't know if it's up here. Notice it, it's I, it might be blocking me because I'm not really uh, a student or because I'm doing this before the assignment is available. I'm not sure. But in any case, I'm pretty sure it'll let you. Now, now, if it doesn't, please uh, contact me so I can uh, troubleshoot and maybe call the company and ask 
uh, what, what's going on, right? But I'm pretty sure it'll let you submit. Let me know right away if it doesn't, okay? Um, submitting is very important because even though all your answers have been saved, right? If I had had answers, mine would have been saved. Um, you don't get it until you submit. You don't get, I will not receive your assignment or I'll receive it. No, I won't receive it. I will not receive your assignments if you don't submit it, okay? So again, pardon the fact that it doesn't work, but I know that eight people did successfully submit the, the, the reading number one assignment. So, and, and nobody, nobody uh, wrote me uh, or called me or anything saying that, that, that it wasn't, the submit, submit button wasn't working, okay? So, so that's that. That's the assignment. Let's see, I'm gonna return to instructor view and I'm gonna return to Blackboard. Okay, and so we are back um, and that's it. So um, I hope you've, uh, if you do have any further questions, just uh, text uh, the best place to, to contact me is through Pronto, right? Um, all right. Have a, have a great day, night, whatever, whatever it is, whenever you're looking at this. Okay. Bye-bye.